So Imaging Resource did a questionnaire with Nikon guys today and uh, I'm just going to go through those questions. There's some good questions about video stuff that was kind of, you know, um, up in the air, no one knew anything about. So uh, I, I asked some questions, some other people asked some other questions um, and I'd like to just go through them. Uh, some of them uh, are going to be very helpful and some are going to be upsetting but other than that they're going to be pretty good. Uh, the first one was why does the battery uh, you know just is not as quite as good as the old one and uh, they said that um, I guess because of regulations in Japan they had to change the battery um, how much could be stored so I don't know quite what that means but he says uh, the X speed like processor in the D4 is so good that it um, it will I think it will be a little less than the old one but um, that's why they had to do it um, also the big question is can you have a histogram up in live view mode here is a D7000 okay and one of the many painful things about doing video with this thing is that there is no light metering of any si um, any kind on it um, during live view mode so uh, if you wanted to see a histogram there's no way of seeing that um, overlay over top of the video or kind of any uh, light meter that says you're a stop underexposed or overexposed but um, I guess they said with the new D4 uh, there's going to be a live histogram updating and it can be turned off and on so that is that's good news so they said with the display button when you're in live view mode there'll be different displays and one of them will have to have the histogram on so you can quickly uh, check um, uh, your settings see if you need to change your aperture or anything and then you can go maybe to a different display mode where it's just showing your microphone levels and stuff like that um, also uh, someone asked about sensor cleaning it's not it wasn't on anything but yeah it's just the typical sensor cleaning uh, I'm sure it's the same one that's in the D3S. Uh, also, they said yes, they can confirm that it's 8-bit 422. Okay, so um, when you're doing an external record from the HDMI, uh, the guy said you have to have both cards out of the camera. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. You have to have the CF card and their new fangled card out of the camera before you can get a 1080p signal coming out of the HDMI. So on the side of the camera, this is not a D4 but D7000, uh, there'll be an HDMI, mini HDMI um, port. Um, you have to actually uh, get an external recorder, there's a bunch out there, and, and it will send a clean 1080p signal out of the camera. That's all they'll say, so it's a clean 1080p signal coming out of the camera. Um, and depending on recorder, you can record in different formats. So some people are a little confused and like, well, does it record in ProRes? But no, it's all depends on your recorder. So if you get a recorder, um, some of them record right into ProRes, and um, that's will help you with working in Final Cut uh, without encoding the video because it's going to be already encoded on that hard drive. So 1080p HDMI out of the camera, 4222 8-bit. Um, someone else said, can you hook up uh, an Anton Bauer battery? And they said, no, they don't have any way of doing that. But he did suggest, well, he didn't recommend it, but he said there is going to be a power adapter so when you can physically plug in the D4 into the wall, um, he said you could, someone could hack it so you could take that adapter and then, you know, splice it with an Anton Bauer battery pack. So that is I'm not saying it's possible, but he just the guy there said, you know, you could do that. Um, also, some people are wondering, you know, like if you're doing um, clean signal out of the camera through HDMI to a hard drive, okay, um, how long can you leave it in live view mode? Because um, there's some worries with some cameras. There's a Sony A55 where when it was open too much in live view mode, the sensor was just like burning out <laughs> and uh, it was killing off cameras. Um, but he said for this, it's, it's, it closes the live view, okay, when the mirror flips up, it will close it after 60 minutes. So um, those people are thinking they could do like a live, um, say a concert or something, uh, and want to do an external out from the HDMI. 
Uh, if, this, if the concert was over an hour, you would actually have to physically restart and then flip up the mirror again. I don't know if there's any kind of like thermal wait time, like it's too hot to do another 60 minute clip. He, uh, no one asked that, but it does flip the mirror down after 60 minutes. Um, so that is kind of a pain, but it's, it's longer than the 20, I think it's 29 minutes that the camera can do uh, recording to the internal card. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for the main questions there. Uh, it's recording to H.264 inside the camera, everyone knows that, and it's B-frame, so it's not quite as good for internal um, recording compared to like a GH2 or something, but uh, when you do that clean HDMI out, um, you're going to get, I think, really good results. We'll have to see uh, what it looks like, um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, the cool thing though is that live view was a pain in the butt. Also with the D7000, you couldn't change the aperture um, uh, on it while you're in live view, okay? So if you had an electronic lens on here, I have an old manual focus one on here, but if you had a newer electronic lens, you couldn't change the aperture on the D7000 while you're in live view. But in the D4, you can change all your settings um, and and it won't stop it. I don't know why it, the D7000 does that, but you can change your aperture in the D4. Another thing that I'm not quite sure I understand yet, but someone asked about the smooth aperture, okay? So there were some rumors out there that the, the camera would have like a smooth aperture, so if you were going from a dark area to a light area, instead of it doing the click stops um, to, you know, uh, make sure it's darker for the scene, um, that it would do it smoothly. And the guy did say that when you're recording, I don't know why this is true, but when you're recording straight from the HDMI out, okay, to an external recorder again, that you can hold down a, one of the function buttons and roll down a wheel and it will slowly dial down the aperture. So I can see that becoming in handy if you're going, you hold down the function button, you slowly roll it down and it's gonna gradually change the aperture down um, so it's a lot smoother when you're going from outside to inside or something like that. I have no idea all the details about that yet, but that's what they mentioned, so we'll find out more here soon. So I don't know if you can do that to the internal card. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do that. Maybe it has something to do with it outputting from uh, the HDMI that affects it. But what I think I understand is that it only works when you're doing an external recorder. So that's it, man. The D4, it looks like a good camera. We'll have to see. A little expensive, but for that external uh, HDMI out, um, and that they haven't hampered it with all those stupid things the D7000 has, um, and it seems like it's going to be, uh, I don't know, I think it's going to be a, one of the better cameras for under six grand, six grand for video recording. Also, he said something they mentioned about um, that the video recording um, with the high ISO, like super high, has um, noise reduction. Um, that's not added after, something that it's like real-time noise reduction, so I don't know if that's going to really improve the video compared to other cameras, or maybe other cameras have that, I'm not, I wasn't sure about that one, but he said um, that the video has real-time noise reduction, so we'll have to see. That's it, guys. Check out my photography website, lvphoto.ca. Thank you.